Well, I'm doing an hour right. today. Usually okay, it's a half hour to four. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, workshop, um, kind of. Did you place your order, David? I'm just having coffee. Okay. Do you want some coffee? Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Great. I would like protein chicken. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker, David George Brook, the Brooker, that gratitude guy. David George Brook has been a speaker, teacher, life coach, and best selling author for over 25 years. He's a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 40 years. He specializes in teaching people the benefits of living a life of gratitude and specifically the advantages of using a daily gratitude journal. As the author of the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude and Gratitude Nuggets to Chew On, David will show us the transformative power of gratitude. He was recently featured on New Day with Margaret Larson on King TV and Chat with Women on KIXI Radio. With 300 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, over 35,000 viewers have seen his message, and he is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. Please welcome David George Brook, the Brooker. <laughs> thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Linda for telling Rebecca. I love to speak. I'm blessed enough to be able to speak a couple times a week and it's, uh, it's an absolute passion I've followed since those days at Nordstrom's and so forth. Let me ask you a question. How many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? Everywhere I go from groups of 10 or 20 up to a couple thousand, it's always about 80 to 90 percent. There's just something about it and it doesn't have to be just people. One of the things that really define my life, as you'll find out in a minute, is, is the loss of people. It can be jobs and homes and careers, and there's just all sorts of chaos out there, especially these last six or seven years. So when you suffer a loss something of, some, of that magnitude, one of the things I'm going to talk about in a minute is how you have ways of coping with that that works your healthy. Let me tell you what happened to me. September 29th, 1998, it was a Tuesday. I woke up, and I looked over in bed, and I couldn't find my wife. I thought, where's Dana? That's funny. She's not here. And I get up, just like I get up, my four-year-old son Connor comes running up to me, he goes, where's mom? I don't know, let's go find her. So we walk down the hallway, we look in a couple of the rooms, and then Kyle comes in. Kyle's my older son, he's 14. And we go walk into us, so we look downstairs and she's down in front of the washer and dryer, kind of curled over, and it doesn't look good. And we go rushing down there and we roll her over and there's all this stuff coming out of her mouth and stuff. And Connor starts crying. He's, what's wrong with mommy? And I said, Kyle, go call the police, go call the fire. And within a matter of just a few minutes, our house probably had 20 to 25 people just crawling all over it, medic people and fire and, and uh, police and so forth. And they had all these wires and paddles and just like you see on TV, it's very surrealistic. I've never been through anything like this in my life. And she, they're chalking her, her chest is popping up and everything. And for anybody that's ever gone through something like that, time loses all measure. And you just lose complete track of time. Uh, the actual part of you of being numb or being numb rather from shock your whole body kind of shuts down. You don't even know if it's a dream or if it's a nightmare, or if it's real or whatever it is. But this little short fire person comes over to me and she says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half and we still have no heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? And I said, no, you can stop. And even when you're in shock, your brain still has the capacity to work a little bit. And I said, uh, I thought to myself, she's dead. She's 38 years old. And what made it so compelling for me is not only that, but prior to that, that's coming up on 15 years, because as I mentioned, it was September 29, 1998. I lost my father to suicide. He was a very prominent attorney, and he decided to put a shotgun in his mouth one day. My mom had died of cancer when I was young. A couple of my friends died when we graduated from Queen Anne High School in a crash on Dexter Avenue. One cl very close friend is, is who he was and his brother more friends in Vietnam. It just went on and on and on. And I remember about two or three days after Dana passed away, I walked up to this little small deck on the back of the house and I just kind of looked up at the sky and the numbness had kind of worn off. It was maybe two or three days later. And I looked up at the sky and I just thought, this for the first time in my life, I understood why people kill themselves. And I, I remember just literally pinching my skin and just going, I'm just flesh and bone and cartilage and this little thing called a human being. I don't know if I can handle this. 
Connor's four, Kyle's 14. I've lost my wife. I've had all these other people pass away for me. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. And I thought at some point, I'm going to have to figure out what to do. And I hope it's a healthy way of living because there's a heck of a lot of unhealthy ways of coping in this world. But what I realized is a lot of it depends on how you look at something. And it's all about your view of what happens to you. You hear people say it's not what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens to you. So I'd like you to all stand up if you would please. It's early in the morning. I'm going to have you stretch out just a little bit. Just, your, just take your right arm and I want you to turn it in a clockwise motion. Okay, now I don't want to embarrass anybody, but anybody's uncertain, there is a clock right over there. You can just see right there which way is clockwise. So keep, keep it going clockwise, keep that nice stretch. Now just start slowly bringing it down in that clockwise manner. Keep it bringing down slowly, keep bring it to your eyes, to your chin, to your chest, and now to your waist. Now what direction is it going? Anybody? Bueller? Counterclockwise, thank you, you can sit down. So, there's always, there's always a few people I feel so good about, like Emily, is it Emily? Yeah. And Monica, and they, they just, and they just make me feel so good, they go, did I change, what happened there? And, and, they, all, and they just stop, and it just makes me feel so good. Kind of proves my point. In fact, I have a friend of mine who is a very good friend of mine, and he calls me last week, he's a very, very bright individual, and he says to me, um, I'm gonna run out of space, um, Dave, can you tell me about that? Gosh darn it, oh, I gotta start this over here. I'm not gonna have enough space, a long word. And he, start, and he says, you know the little circle thing you do about how you look at stuff? And I go, yeah. And he goes, so yeah, you've been doing that trick for a while and I'm just kind of curious, so what, what is the trick? So I want to do it for my group. I mean, do they change? And I go, George, I said, it's because you're looking at it from the top versus the bottom. He goes, no, seriously, seriously, what's the trick? Why do people, do they stop or what is it? So, and he's a bright guy. So I, I don't quite understand. Uh, let's see if I did this right. I usually have this on a piece of paper, but I'm so excited to see a chalkboard here. Let me make sure this is written properly. Yes, so volunteers, what does that say? Opportunities now here. Opportunities now here. Anything else? Opportunities nowhere. And opportunities nowhere. Anything else? Opportunities snow here. <laughs> opportunities snow here. Was that you, Linda? Yeah. yeah. There's always somebody that sees the snow, <laughs> which I think is good. Well, opportunities, excuse me, Nancy, opportunities now here versus opportunities nowhere is significantly different. And so again, it depends on how you look at it. And so the whole thing about this is how you view something. Now, one of the things I've been talking about lately is that I tell people on these talks that I want you to look at it as your life, you've got a T in the road. And you, go, you get to go left or right, but you can't keep going down the road you've gone anymore. Because there's a lot of people, you can either be positive or negative, that wake up every single day, and we all know them, and they've got kind of crazy attitudes and so forth. And so it's, this, it's a, how you look at this. It's how you view that circle and so forth. So the thing that I realized is that there was a couple of things I was going to have to to deal with if I'm going to if I'm going to survive and raise my two sons and one of them is after you understand gratitude and we're going to do a couple exercises in a second but after you embrace gratitude you've got to start by getting rid of the crap and I mean crap that is in your brain because we get a lot of junk and we're inundated with stuff just watch the news I don't know about you guys I was raised and just to be completely transparent, I'm 63. I know I don't look a day over 62, um, but I am 63. So I, born, I was born in 1950. And the news was the newspaper, one in the morning, one at night, the five o'clock news, the six o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, all these things. And I just had to know what was going on. And I walked by the TV a couple years ago and it was some shooting in West Seattle. And I'll never forget it was King 5 or whatever. And they go, stay tuned, and as more details become available, we'll let you know like what kind of gun it was. And I just broke out laughing. Why do I, what, how does this concern me? If it's a 38 caliber or 22 caliber or whatever. So when you get this junk in it, and I understand Margaret Larson, as Rebecca said, I was on New Day recently, and she said off camera, she says, well, this is, I feel kind of bad because you're here talking about gratitude and our whole thing's about negative crap. And I actually said crap, I said, I'm glad the TV wasn't on or the camera. But the point is that we're filled with this stuff. So 
in a way, you've got to figure out how you're going to get rid of this stuff. So I would like to do a little something here. Would you be kind of just pass those out and just add and start around that way and just pass these around. Everybody take one, please. And this concept, I call this my, uh, Linda, did we do this before? I don't think we did, did we? Anyway, I call this the red paper exercise. And does everybody have a pen? If you don't have pens, I have pens. Anybody need a pen? Let's see here. Okay, who needs pens? Emily does. Pen down there, Mr. CPA. Anybody else? Okay. There you are. Thank you. All right, so we all went through a stop sign or went through a, a three-way light or whatever you call them today. What, is, what does green mean? So what does red mean? Stop. So one of the things we're going to do with this is we're going to stop. But here's the significance of red paper that's really important. Because I'm going to have you write some things on here. And one of the cool things, somebody explained this to me one day about red paper, is on red paper, with pen or paper, or, uh, pencil, whatever it is, you can't see what the person next to you writes. Very, very difficult. Because I don't know if you're going to want to have the people next to you see what you write. So what I want to do is I'm going to time you, and I'm going to give you two minutes, and I want you to write down as best you can in order of importance every mess up you've done in your life that you're so irritated with yourself about you can't even talk about. Now people, there's people all the time that go, I need a half hour. And I, and, you know, I need probably 20 or 30 minutes. But I'm just going to give you two minutes today and I want you to write, because you know, and you know some of these, nobody else in the whole world knows except you. But I want you to write them down. I'm so irritated. I did this, 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 whatever. Two minutes, write down everything you can think of that you'd love to get the heck out of your brain. And I'll give you two minutes and go and start now. Okay, about another minute. We met before, because I remember. Um, How's that legal sheet? Yeah, the, the trampoline thing. Yeah. Yeah, I do. About 15 seconds. Okay, stop. Now, I was shocked a couple days ago. I was down in Olympia doing a presentation for Children's Hospital. And just as a course of my normal thing, I said, does anybody want to share what's on the red paper? Nobody ever raises their hand. I wouldn't want to share. I mean, I, I just don't want to think. I just want to get rid of this stuff. And the scout right here, she raises her hand. I'd like to share mine. 
I didn't know what to do. I said, okay. So she stood up and she talked about some of the things that happened to her life and she was irritated with her parents. I think it was, it was actually kind of cool, but I just had never seen that before because the whole idea behind this is I want you to stop thinking about these things. That's why it's the red paper. I don't want your neighbor to see it because some of these are intensely personal. And most of all, we're going to make room for gratitude so when you're going forward, that you have a place to put the positive things and not the negative things. When you go out in your car today, it's going to be this big windshield. It's like two feet deep and like four or five feet wide. And it's that huge. And then here's the rear view mirror. That's how I want you to think of your life. Most of it's up front. Rear view mirror, that's right here. Only thing you want to pay attention to, maybe some flashing blue lights or something you want to pull over. <laughs> pay attention to it for that. But other than that, that's what I want you to do. Now, I'm going to give you one minute to shred that into as many pieces as you can. And whoever has the most pieces gets a book. Starting now. Go. I love to see all the techniques. There's, I like that technique. Ten seconds. Okay, stop. Okay, let's see here. Oh, this is good. That's pretty good. Leo Cal. Uh, do we have a, like a consensus over on that side of the table there? No, he's done pretty good. This is good. <laughs> James, James thinks he won. <laughs> Gosh, this is good. Oh, yeah. What's your name? Jody. Jody. Jody's is pretty good. Um, Linda, yours is pretty good. James, yours is pretty good. Okay, this is always this is always a tough one. I like that, though. Is it Kim? Yes. I think I have to go with Jody. And there's always, and then of course, this is the risk, because what do you got, 20, 25 people here, people come after her. I had a heck of a lot more than she did. And so you think you're going to sell in your books to me? Forget it. So, um, so let me just tell you a little something about this book. Jody, this is 50 gratitude nuggets to chew on. It's 50 little sayings and quotes to kind of inspire you. Most are about gratitude, some are just about life. So at the end, I'm going to draw for business cards and give away a book. And two weeks ago, I was doing a deal, and I and the gal comes up front. There's about 150 people. It's a pretty good sized group. So she walks up front, and they all clap, and she won the book and everything. And I hand her the book, and I said, "Here you go, Jody. Congratulations." And I go, "If you'd like me to sign it later, I will." She goes, "That's okay." <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I'll make sure to come visit. Yeah, thank you, Jody. So I gave Jody 20 bucks to say that. I think she was looking for John Grisham down at uh, Barnes & Noble or something. <laughs> Not really quite sure. So hopefully that helped you. This gal down in Olympia there, they took all the pieces of paper and put it in the form of a rose. And then she said something, I put it on Facebook, and it, and it was really cool. It was a big rose, and then she put, this is the start of my new view of my future. It was very, very cool. So, But in order to fill your brain with gratitude, you've got to clean it out, as I just mentioned. Just like cleaning out the garage, cleaning out the... the uh, uh, car, whatever you want to call it, the closet, getting ready. Monica, you're talking about a new line coming in. I mean, just anytime we're going through these transitions, you need to get rid of junk. And I'll guarantee you, there's some things on that red paper that were pretty personal that you want to stop thinking about as best you can. And that's one way to to do it, figuratively or li literally speaking. But one of the things I noticed is that I challenge groups all the time. I, sp I speak from from 10 or 15 up to a couple of thousand, and I'm always telling people, it's, it's there's something about one in 20. That's something I just jumped onto, 1 in 20. I will tell 20 people, you need to do this, you need to get a gratitude journal, whatever, and it always seems like one or two do, and the other ones don't. It's okay. But I always challenge people, and I just want you to think about today, are you kind of the one, or are you one of the 19? And just think about it, and how do you conduct your life? In the case of uh, Dana, uh, shortly before her death, Dr. Dickinson calls me, that was the guy who was at Everett uh, Providence, 
He says, are you David Brooke? Are you Dana's uh, husband? I need to talk to you. Come on in. And they were having kind of a visiting day, but here's all these people out in this other room. Probably 20 or 30 people. And he says, I want to tell you something. See, she's an attorney. He's a doctor. They're an, he, they're an architect, this kind of thing. And it was all about making you feel addiction because Dana had been hooked on prescription medication. And it was all about knowing that these are just everyday people. But I said, but honestly, Dr. Dickinson, the only person I really care about is that really pretty blonde gal, Dana. And he says, I know, but I need to let you tell you what, I need to let you know what you're up against. One in 20 will make it back to a normal life. And of the 19 that don't, half of them will be dead in the next six months. And she was dead about six months later. And so I really realized that not only in that case, but this addiction thing, and this is why I offer gratitude in books and thoughts, and I do a gratitude video every single day on a new subject, on something to be grateful for. Because we have all these terrible, terrible coping mechanisms. I read in the paper recently over on the east side, they're getting all these break-ins and stuff. And people go in and the cops, they call the cops and everything. Cops come and the computers and the jewelry and a lot of the stuff is all left there. And the medicine cabinets are empty. And that's what people are going after. So you have to decide, are you going to be the one or are you going to be the 19? Now, once you clear out your brain, the next thing I want you to remember is it takes as long as it takes. As I said, I'm 63 years old. I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19. That's like over 40 or 50 years ago, whatever it is. And I didn't know how it was going to happen. I managed those Nordson stores. I managed Lowe's stores. I did different things. But I just knew at some point I was going to follow this destiny of mine. I just felt it's never changed. But I didn't know how it would work. But you can't give up. Colonel Sanders was like my age when he started KFC, 62 or 63. Sylvester Stallone went to like 300 banks to get financing for Rocky. Walt Disney went to several hundred banks until he got financing for Disneyland. Can't imagine how our lives would be without something like Disneyland. So you can't give up. So Connor, as I mentioned, is four years old when Dana passed his away. And about six months later, he's in kindergarten. And the lady says to me, your son is really messed up. We've got some real problems here. We need to evaluate him. So she goes through all these tests. So Connor and I go down to this school in, by Green Lake is where we live. They put him through a battery of tests and they're throwing balls and gross motor, fine motor and all this kind of stuff. Very, very grueling day. Very, very long day. At the end she says, um, can you have Connor go wait in the car? I need to talk to you. Sure. Uh, your son's messed up. And I said, well, he, his mother just died six months ago. What do you expect? No, he's, he's really messed up. He's got, he's, he needs uh, occupational therapy, he needs this, he needs that. He's had this list of all this kind of stuff. And I couldn't even believe what I was hearing. I said, do you understand what happened to him? His mom just died. I just lost my wife. Yeah, 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 whatever. But uh, he's going to have a tough time with coordination and different things. So I walk out into the car. I get in the car. Connor's in the car. I, I do the only thing that just was natural. I just burst into tears. I couldn't stop crying. I said, what are you crying about? And I said, I, I can't even talk. And I, let's, let's just go home. So... Connor, bless his pee pick and heart, kept trying, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exceed and I'm going to excel at everything. I'm going to keep trying. But one of the things is with sports. So he wanted to play baseball. So we start with coach pitch, you know, and he, he, he didn't have a good of a time of it yet. Then we went to t ball. Now, let me explain something about it. for those of you. How many here are parents? Quite a few, majority. Okay, on the, you notice on the t ball, the, t, the ball doesn't move. It's right here, it just sits right here. So Connor's swinging at the ball, and sometimes he's over, sometimes he's hitting the tee. And Connor, the ball's right here. He, all you gotta do is just hit it. But he kept sticking with it. He had kind of a tough time. Then we went through the stages, and he went through and he had a hard time at baseball. He had a hard time hitting, throwing, catching, running, you name it. So then we get to, he keeps with it though. That was the thing that impressed me so much. Then we get to May 31st, 2005, and we have a game. It's the bottom of the seventh inning. It's eight to seven, seven to six rather, the other team. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Two guys, one guy in second, one guy in third. Guess who comes out of the dugout? It's Connor. So I do, knowing how many times he's gone back in that dugout and put his head, buried his face and just had a tough time with baseball. And uh, I do the only thing that seems natural. I put my hands together. I look up and I go, how about a walk? Maybe a hit by a pitch. Give my, just give my son some way to get on base. Ball one, strike one. Ball two, strike, full count. 
Next pitch, he rips down the third baseline, goes into left field. The guy from third comes in to score. The guy from second comes around third, is running down. Here comes the ball. Here's the catcher. Here's the guy from third. The guy, I think he caught it. They all crash to the plate. The ball pops out. They went eight to seven. And Connor is sitting out on second base by himself, and the entire dugout runs out and puts him on his shoulders, their shoulders, and carries him off the field. And I couldn't talk for about a half hour. Yeah, I had the biggest lump in my throat. And when we got home, I sat down, remember, just like yesterday, I sat down on the bed next to him, and I said, Connor, it was never about baseball. It's the fact that you never gave up. And everything that he did from that time to get to that point from there forward was about achieving and later to become their leadoff hitter, their star center fielder. He had a game-winning hit and so on and so forth. And I'm delighted to say that today, uh, for the first time in a year of speaking, he's here to see me. That's Connor. Aww. And I've told him many times, I said, one of these days when you come to see me speak, I'm going to embarrass the heck out of you. And you're, you're never there, so I... <laughs> I said, but I, I have to use that example of so often of, of, of not giving up. But it does take as long as it takes. And I just want you to think about, as we talk about these things, I just want you to think about times in your life you haven't given up. I want you to think about things that you've had to overcome. That's why I want that junk that's behind you to stay back there. So once we do that, in fact, oh, let me do one more quick thing, too, that I think is interesting, is that everybody just, I know you're all eating, but just for a second, take your right hand and point to yourself. Just very quickly point to yourself. Okay, 90% of the people, thank you, 90% of the people are pointing to their heart. And I understand this whole idea of the brain, and, and it was funny, because in Olympia, this, there was, everybody always goes, goes about here, and I think it's so important, so I think what starts in your heart, whether it's being a dad, having a great son, and two sons as I do, or anything, it's all driven from the heart. And then, and then there's this one lady, she was sitting over, and she goes just like this. <laughs> and it was so strange, I didn't know what to say. It was like right between her eyes. So anyway, so what, what happened, and this is what I want to spend a few minutes on, which is so important. This is really the, the centerpiece of what I talk about. So I was having a heck of a time, and I'm trying to believe everything that I've been teaching all these years about 1 in 20 and hanging in there and raising my sons and all that kind of thing. And a buddy of mine says to me, you need to get a gratitude journal. Now, who here has ever heard of a gratitude journal? Wow, that's pretty good. Who's ever heard of a journal? Okay, most of, who's ever seen a journal? <laughs> I always got a few people asking, thank you. So I didn't know what it was. And I said, what's a gratitude journal? So he says, well, it's the thing you write in every day and you talk about everything you're grateful for. And I'd been struggling because of so many of the things I'd gone through, all these deaths and, and trying to raise Connor and Kyle and so forth. So I get this gratitude journal, I order it through Amazon, and I do what a lot of us do, which irritated me. I just put it on the shelf and didn't touch it for three months. I thought, why do you do this? Why did you order it and then put it on the shelf? So I decided that at one point I'm going to need to write in it. And so I start writing in it and amazing things start happening. It's actually the secret journal. And then I decided I'm going to do my own journal. And so I developed the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And the number one quote when I talk about from the heart, at least everything emanating from the heart, 90% of you poured into your heart for instance, is that if you think about it it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about that thought, the CPU up here, the brain. I'm so grateful for Rebecca for inviting me, for Linda for telling Rebecca that I get to be here today to share this message, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It goes from there to your heart, to your arm, to your hand, to your pen, onto paper. I've timed this tons and tons of times. It takes seven and a half minutes. That's all it takes. And the structure I have is that on this left-hand side, you have the, the day, the date, and your daily number, which we'll talk about in a second. A couple of lines on your special occasions, anything is happening. That's just so you don't have to have a other diary or other journal. This is what you're grateful for. The little section at the bottom, just one line is your highlight of your day. Typically, if it's in the morning like today, it would be from yesterday. And then this is your gratitude intentions. The gratitude intentions is all about what you're grateful for. It hasn't even happened yet. Your subconscious mind is amazing. It cannot distinguish between what is actually going to happen and what has actually happened in terms of how you feed it, the information that you do. So what I want to do, now I notice people are still eating breakfast, so um, 
I have another little exercise here for you. So hopefully you can put it to the side of the plate. Con, can you hand these out for me? And so, but here's what I want to do before I start this exercise. I want to get a kind of a flavor from everybody here. And if I talk about one to 10, 10 is the best day of your life or one of the best days of your life. And one is a day that maybe you don't want to talk about or maybe it was on that red paper. <clears throat> and so everything in between, you can do halves. So if you are, so think about, get your number, which you are this very moment at 9.50 this morning on a Thursday, I think it is. So if you're between a one and a five, I don't want you to raise your hand. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want to be having a tough day. That's going to happen. We know how life is. But, but let me just go through and see. Let's just sort of poll the audience. How many people are a six? Okay, don't see any. How many, uh, maybe a half. How many are a seven? Okay, handful of sevens. How about eights? Okay, that's pretty good. Nines, two or three. And any tens? Okay. So, James, I apologize, you're right in the middle of those scrambled eggs. No, no, it's okay, I just wanted to, I just wanted to tell you what you get your thing. So, take your pen, here's what I'd like you to do. And I know again, I apologize, I forgot you guys were in that breakfast. Usually these workshops, people got all their little papers laid out and everything. I would like you to take, and I'm going to give you, again, two minutes on this, and here's all I want you to do. You kind of talked about your daily number. I want you to, where it says uh, special uh, events and that kind of thing, don't worry about that, but where it says, I'm so grateful for, I want you to write two or three sentences, ten words, whatever you're grateful for, try to prioritize as best you can, and then at the bottom, I want you to write what was your highlight of the day. And that probably is going to be from yesterday, but whatever. So I will give you two minutes. Can you and repeat it one more time? Sure. What you are so grateful for, a couple, three sentences on what you're grateful for. They can be individual words. I'm so grateful for this, anything like that. Uh, maybe the two or three or four top things you can think of in your life. And then the highlight of your day from yesterday, which is down at the bottom. Okay, two minutes and starts now. Okay, 15 seconds. <coughs> okay, stop. And of course you can keep those and use those later. Uh, now, unlike the red paper exercise, even though, with the exception of that young lady the other day that shared. Uh, who would like to share something they wrote down they're grateful for? Rebecca. My son, Stan. And how old is Stan? 20. What a cool name. Oh, he's almost the same. Connor's 19. Almost the same. Has he left for school yet? No, but he just got accepted this week to the aerospace engineering program at the UW. So. Oh, fantastic. 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 Excellent. Linda? 
hugs from my grandkids. That's a good thing to be grateful for. Yes. Love. I'm sorry? Love. Yes, wonderful thing. Boy, without that, I don't know where we'd be. Yes. Hi, husband. <laughs> Another good thing to be grateful for. Excellent. In fact, uh, Kim. Oh, even more so. Excellent. I tell people, a lot of people ask me, I do coaching and um, various things, and I connect with a lot of people every week. They well, how should I write my gratitude journal? And you're, you're, you're the expert here and everything. And I, I said, I'm not going to tell you how to write it, but I will tell you, if health isn't at or near the top, I, I don't know what you have if you don't have your health. It's pretty hard. And, and I did a video the other day on relationships, and the relationship thing is very important, but health is kind of 1A, and relationships, I think, are kind of 1B. I mean, you've got to have people to share your life with, too. Most cases, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, that's a great. That is a great one. Uh, God-given talent. And I was thinking about one day, all of us again here. We can say how hard we worked, and I know how hard Connor worked to to get to where he is now. And he's heading off to college. You mentioned Stanton, Rebecca, and Connor's leaving for San Diego and three weeks so my life's going to be dramatically different as he takes off on his venture down south and how we've gone through all this together but I'm telling you when I think about what's here we can take credit for working hard but a lot of this we were born with and I'm very very fortunate to be able to stand up in front of people and talk and I know that probably every single person in this group could stand up and tell a very compelling story which would touch a lot of hearts as well I'm the one that gets to be blessed enough to get up here and do it and some of that comes from those things too so great great point yes Mm. Nice, nice. Nancy. No longer being an, an feeling like I'm an island. I have mm. a lot of support and with my business and in my personal life. And for years, I would feel like I'm an island, and I'm no longer an island. Excellent. It's the best way I could describe it. First name plus. <laughs> I love that. Who did that? You did. Um, excuse me. Plus, you're around trampolines all day long. I think that's so cool. Uh, okay. How about any highlights from yesterday? I like today. Yes. Oh, I yesterday morning I was swimming in Lost Lake in Whistler, Canada. And oh, nice. I caught up on a little dock nice. and a dragonfly came over and just circled me about five times and then came right here and then flew away. It wow, was, what a highlight! Oh, how cool! Just in time for the gratitude exercise the next day. <laughs> I'm so excited, Michelle. Healthy enough to still play. Play athletically with the softball, and um, we played well, battled, and played playoffs. So small little win. Kim, it's like you said, the um, with all these people that passed away. One of my fraternity brothers died of Lou Gehrig's disease, and again, this this list is so long. And so, this when I go, I friends of mine have artificial hips and knees. I've got both my knees work, and I still can work out with Connor at the gym and, and, and lift my weights or do whatever. And so it's something to be very blessed for. You're exactly right. Any other highlights? Yes, Monica. Got a massage. Yeah. <laughs> that is very good. That's one of the nicest treats you can do. Yes. Yesterday, I had a friend of mine that was in a, she, she got hurt at work and she was, her body was so inflamed that I couldn't really give her a massage, so I gave her an aromatherapy treatment, and by the end of it, she felt like 10 times better, and she was so excited to just feel relief from her pain and everything, even though it wasn't a massage, it was just from essential oils. So right. Oh, awesome. excellent. Excellent. And, and here's the thing about this gratitude journal, and, and all my fraternity brothers and friends, and they all give me a hard time, and my sister says, well, yeah, that's great, Mr. Gratitude, I saw you on TV, whatever. And uh, she goes, but I, I just think it every day. And that's fine, you can do that. I actually have, I've developed a gratitude journal for the iPhone, you know, and I don't know if it be on Droid as well, but anyway, and, but I'm telling you, you can't get it unless you're under 30. You know, I'm not, our age and above, and there's people here under 30, of course, but um, it's not as effective is when you write it you can go back and you can look at things and there's something about why did we write things down when we were in high school and college and all these things because it plants it in your brain there's something about that but when you can when you can see what you wrote and I'm so grateful for that firefly it's just very very powerful and then here's another thing too that I never understand so Nina yes, sir. can you put your hand up no I mean like this to me okay now see this is so interesting so I'm pushing on Nina what is she doing yeah now, did I say to, to resist? I just said, put your hand up. 
And so I, I always find, and, and every, I don't think anybody's ever just gone like that. I think once that's happened in all the times I've done that. And because I said, just put your hand up. I didn't say resist, but people naturally resist. So to me, this one in 20 thing is so powerful. I'm not going to make people, I've asked, actually I, a couple of weeks ago I asked them, I said, are you the one or the 19th? Expecting everybody to be the one. That you're the exception to the rule. You're not the one that just, I forgot to get the book, I pushed back, and all these different kind of things. I said, how many people are a night, one of the 19th? <laughs> like half the people raise their hands. And I just, okay, I'll go on to my next exercise. Because I was trying to empower these people to understand that if you do something, it doesn't have to be my gratitude journal, but if you do something like this, it can change your life. There was a gal that was working for me, her name was Tracy, a long time ago. And I've been talking about this one in 20 for a long time. And so she says, uh, uh, Mr. Brooke, I'm going to be the one. You watch. I will be the one that succeeds in this life. And then she proceeds to get, it was a detail shop I put together. I'd left Nordstrom. And she proceeds to get pregnant by one of the people there. Well, that's not a good start. And uh, I think she'd had kind of a tough life. And so she ends up, uh, she says to me, I'm going to have the baby. I'm going to move to Texas. But you watch. I will turn my life around. You will be so proud of me. So she leaves and she goes to Texas. And frankly, I kind of forgot about her. And about a year later, she calls me. And she says, uh, she broke is Tracy, and I didn't remember. Oh, Tracy, 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 that's right. She goes, I told you I was going to report back to you, and I was going to tell you how I'm doing, and I turned my life around thanks to you. I thought, well, that's terrific. So I said, well, what's uh, the latest? Well, I had my baby. Well, that's terrific. What's his name? And his name, I think it was Ronnie or something like that. I said, well, how old's Ronnie? He's like three, four months old. She goes, well, here's the best part, too, beyond that. I have a new man in my life. Great. What's his name? His name is Bob. I said, what's Bob do? Well, he's on work release right now. <laughs> and I just remember holding the phone. <laughs> Tracy, I don't think that's how you turn your life around. But at some point, that's why I like the tea in the road. And the gratitude journal. And here's another thing, too. And, and at the end, I'm going to draw for a book or two. And I used to do the journals instead of the books, a couple other books I've written. And now I don't anymore because I want people to buy them. And they're $15. And if you buy one, great. If you don't, it's okay. But I want somebody to be invested in the, how this thing can change your life. I told the group yesterday, I said, if you just give it a week. They had, she was very, she bought one for everybody in the group. There's a lot of journals. And it was, I said, I'd rather you didn't do that, but she wanted to. And I said, because a lot of them won't write in. But I'm just telling you, when you've gone through those stories and you've gone through the things that happened in your life, and you watch all the people that die from all these very, very deadly, destructive rather, and in many cases deadly, um, coping mechanisms. I've had three or four more people die of prescription overdoses like Dana. It's just sad. So it's something that's very, very important to deal with. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit now about, oh, one more thing too. When I talk about um, how hard it is and people say, well, that's easy for you and you, you get to write in your gratitude journal when I was running those stores and so forth. And I always, I, and we're not going to do it today because I don't have enough time, but remember the, the little thing where you line up everybody and then you tell one person one thing and they tell the person all the way to the end? And I actually have a card that I do in here. It's about selling a car. But I tell people, just, just try to, if you think about, you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. And that was said earlier. And I look at just remembering names. It's just one little small thing as an example. And I, don't, I can't remember everybody's name here, but I bet you I got a lot of them. Because that's Nina, and that's Rebecca, and that's Kim. And you're the massage person, but I don't remember <laughs> your, your name. And that's, what's your name? Mike. Mike, I did hear you say that, Mike. And that's Amy, and that's James, and that's Nancy, and that's Michelle, and that's Monica, and that's Emily, and that's Jody. And that's, of course, Linda. And I didn't get everybody, but a lot of times I will go down and get every single person's name for one reason only. It's not to impress you, it's to impress upon you. You can do something if you put your mind to it. It's not that difficult. And if you can carve out seven and a half minutes every day to write in a gratitude journal, it'll change your life. It'll absolutely change your life and it'll certainly put it on a more positive track. And for crying out loud, it's, it's, it's less than eight minute abs when you do those little things. So, all right, so the last couple of things I'm going to bring up and then I'm going to wrap up is that in these workshops, I talk about embracing gratitude. I talk about clearing out your brain. You saw the exercise with the red paper. I talk about it takes as long as it takes. You can't get discouraged. Boy, it'd be pretty easy for me at 63 to get discouraged. A lot of my buddies are retired, and they talk about how long the, the boats are, and this one's bigger than that one, and so on and so forth. And after Dana died, and some other things happened to Connor and Kyle and me, uh, it was a challenge. And, uh, but you just can't give up. And then I recommend the gratitude journal. And the last thing I talk about is sharing gratitude. 
because anytime you get something you're excited about, Monica, I've heard you speak before, you want to share it with other people. Pa pa paprika, paprika, you know, what, it doesn't matter what it is. You want it, James, I was listening to you talking to Amy. You were doing a great ACN, right? Yeah, you're excited about it. You want to share it with other people. And I think if you ever want to know, I said to Kim just now, her health, the most important thing in your relationships, your friends are probably second. And then there's all these other things, spouses, I heard that, that was great, down the line. But if you ever want to know who your closest friend is in this life, just stop and think back, who's the first person you called when something really good or really bad happened? And I remember I was, I woke up one day about a year or so ago, and I'd gotten a little depression stuff from my mother, and I'm not happy about it. And I'm not going to take pills. I'm not going to take all this guts. So I saw what happened to Dana. And they, well, you should take Prozac and Paxil. I just, I can't do it. I'm going to fight my way through this. So I woke up and I was like a two. I thought, you're the frickin' gratitude guy for Christ. How can you be a two? And I was doing a talk that day up at the Burlington Chamber, Burlington, no, Washington. So I got out of bed, got my gratitude journal, which of course always cracks me up because people will look at mine. I was writing it just after I saw um, Amy and uh, James were kind enough to, to move from this table. And people will look at me, well, you're writing this every day. And I go, I hope so. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be, I mean, the one thing I, I told Connor, you don't see me smoking, I better not catch you smoking, I've never smoked. I mean, how are you going to, and one of the things, and let me just take a sidebar for a second. A lot of you are in business, how many here, I know you're all, in many cases, entrepreneurs, how many people here have employees? So yeah, a fair amount of them. One of the things I do when I do a talk in businesses and I do a talk in chambers, and I have about 10 minutes I do on business and in the, in the business world around gratitude. Well, how does that relate to gratitude? I mean, I, whatever, Mr. Gratitude Guy. But you know what? The employees of the world have changed. 10, 20, 30 years ago, their number one thing they wanted was appreciation and recognition, help with personal problems, and being in on the know. I remember the back in my Nordstrom days. Now, appreciation and recognition is still pretty powerful, but it's like fourth or fifth. And you know what number one is now? Respect. It's in the neighborhood. Purpose. Why are all these people volunteering to do free work for Wikipedia? You see this everywhere. They're going to work for half the money because they have a purpose. Well, if you ever wanted to help an employee get a purpose, be grateful for yourself, for your job, for your health, all those things we talked about, and then be grateful for them as employees. And you will see a huge difference. When I was at Nordstrom, I got seven or eight promotions in 12 or 13 years, and I was moving up and Mr. Rising Star. And I was always embarrassed. Well, how come you're store manager of the year? How come you're riding on the corporate jet? All these cool things I did. It was for one reason. I followed the golden rule. I treated Nancy, I treated James, I treated Amy, Emily. It doesn't matter. I treated them exactly as I wanted to be treated. I never started a sentence with it. Will you do it without Nancy? Would you do me a favor? Can you move the chairs over for our display here in point of view? I never started any sentence with something other than that. Yeah, and that's the whole point. So it really has to do with how you see yourself. So when you get grateful and then you want to share it, it makes such a big difference. So here's what I'd like you to do. If you, I just want you to take two minutes again, and I'm going to wrap up in a couple more things here in a few minutes, and I just want you to turn to a partner and I want you to share something that by sharing that experience made it so much better in your life. Take about two minutes, just pick a partner and I'll let you guys share it and then we'll have a couple of report outs. Go ahead. What's up? Five, four, four or five minutes left? Yeah. I'm going to stick after this and head out. Uh, well, just help me pass out some stuff and then we, you can take off after that. Cause, okay. Because I'm going to be, i got to be somewhere 11.30. So what are you up to? Um, I'm going to go get some aloe vera from Kermar. Oh, good. Then I'm going to go to the gym. Okay. I was yeah, if you wanted to go with your I, I got it at 11.30, but, but I'll, I'll talk to you after I get back from that. Okay. What do you think so far? It's good. I, I really like doing the exercises because it really gets people engaged. I saw one guy looking at his watch. I was like, am I boring you? Or? I'm so glad you got to see me talk. Yeah, no, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah, five minutes. I know, well, if you get them engaged, just, just talking like this, you know. I'm going to have you, these are the two things I'm going to have you pass out. My card and... Just... 
Huh? Yeah, I'll tell you when. Whenever I listen to speakers, I don't know if you do this and have you have a partner. This is sometimes the most fun. You're sharing with somebody you're sitting next to. It's just the two of you. Well, they're very loud too. I mean, you need to talk pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can we wrap up? Mike, was that any good? Sharing, was it any good? Okay. Um, does anybody want to share with a group their experience where sharing something helped out a lot? Got some people still sharing. Linda? No. Does anybody want to share their experience where by sharing something that made it a lot better? At least you're making eye contact, Nina. It's like when the teacher asks you, who knows the answer to the math problem? Everybody's looking down. Emily. Um, my kids and I went camping last weekend and we drove camping a lot. And um, my mom sometimes goes with us and went came with us last week. And it's so much fun. Because when you're camping, there's no, we were just talking, there's no electronics and there's no, you know, you're sitting around a campfire or going on a hike and just talking. And it's so you know, cool. My kids and I go all the time, but it's so cool to have my mom there. And they get to remember that. And, Poking the fire and sit down. Then you get to clean up all the campfire smells. Yeah. Still, Sometimes that's a good. Has campfire smell solution. <laughs> <laughs> I already washed my clothes. I still smell it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I just want you to. I just want you to remember, and I'll tell you a little story in a minute as I wrap up. But what I'd like to do next is everybody grab your business cards if you would, because I want to do a drawing for a book, and. Hopefully, I imagine you would all have them. And then, Connor, uh, when I actually I'm going to have you take this around first on the drawing, then we'll do this next. And then just a couple of things let me mention before you put them in the... Uh, not yet, Con. Just before you put them in the basket. Just a couple of things I want to mention. Number one, I do a video every single Monday at 7.45. I do one every day, but I send out a featured one every Monday morning at 7.45. Rebecca, I think you may get it. Didn't I put you on there? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, Monica, do you get it? And so, um, if you want to get the video, great. If you don't, put an X on your card because I don't want anybody getting that card that doesn't, uh, or video rather, that doesn't want it. And then the second thing is, is I've gotten asked a lot about uh, coaching. Well, how did you get from where you were to where you are? So I've done a lot of coaching, and so a lot of people ask me that, and so I do offer a 45-minute complimentary coaching consultation for those that are interested. So if you're interested in that put a C on your card and I will follow up. The biggest distinction that I do with that is I've noticed I've got to find people that want to be coached and want to change their life, not feel they need to be. And that's, it seems small, but it's a big distinction. So if you're somebody who really wants to do that, it takes about 45 minutes. Linda, didn't you and I do one, as I recall? We did, it was excellent. Yeah, thank you. So it's just something, because that, that sort of came out of people asking me a lot. In fact, it was another funny thing, and when I go into detail about all the things that have happened to me, and they go, you know, you look okay. <laughs> And I go, I really, I start, what do you, do you want me to look like crap? I mean, should I just come in in jeans and be crying? Who's the speaker? The guy crying over there. He's had a tough life. I mean, at what, at what point? So anyway, all right. So Connor, if you can collect the cards and then nine has got some over there and then we'll draw for a book. And then the other thing is, is after I do, a, as I mentioned, and that's why Linda, I've thanked you several times and I'll thank you again and thank you, Rebecca. I do two or three of these a week. I left the corporate world. My last job was running a Lowe's home improvement store in Mount Vernon. And I am absolutely thrilled. That's why I relate so much to groups such as yours. I know Rebecca talked about a couple of the groups are here together today. Anybody who has the you know what to go out on their own. So I really rely a lot on referrals. I'm getting a lot of neat referrals now and we want to have you come and speak to our group. And um, 
I've gotten, I get to go now to businesses where I get paid finally because I don't charge for these and so, and I do sell, and I do have books available afterwards. And so um, I'm very, very passionate. So then Connor, if you could pass out these two things. So I'm just gonna have Con pass out my card and then I've got a flyer. And um, if you can just keep the flyer, if you know anybody that needs a speaker, and I'm speaking a lot more now to businesses because of this aspect of understanding this employee disengagement, which is at an all time high. And there's so many people now that the turnover is high, disengagement's high, uh, productivity is low, and I've had some pretty good results with uh, the companies that I've gone into. So uh, the winner is Michael Kerr. Is that you, Michael? I told, didn't I tell you I had a great shirt earlier? See, it was karma. It was just kind of a connection. So there is a book that is Happiness Starts with Gratitude, 50 Gratitude Lessons to Direct, Inspire, and Empower You. So, okay, so last thing. Uh, as I mentioned, Connor's passing out the flyers and the cards. Please uh, keep those and refer me whenever you can. I very, very much appreciate it. Last thing I talked about is sharing gratitude. Thanks to, to Connor for being a phenomenal son all these years and my older son Kyle that really kind of kept me going through a lot of tough times and then the gratitude piece I went to support groups and I really wanted to be that one and not that 19 and I was going to determine to be the best dad in the world and um, to raise a couple of great kids and then stay mentally and physically healthy myself but the sharing gratitude piece as you just saw I well, had, had a couple of shares there but it makes it so much more valuable and fulfilling to you embracing gratitude cleaning out your brain taking as long as it takes, you never give up, the gratitude journal and sharing gratitude. So I've been fortunate to be a pilot for a long time when I was younger. I've been fixing up houses and made some money and I've learned how to fly and I bought an airplane. Not a good investment. And uh, I was down by ocean shores and I was flying between the clouds and I was a VFR pilot that day. It means you have to be visual flight rules away from clouds and I got stuck between these layers of clouds. But before I could even get out, this sun comes in from the ocean and it hits the two layers of clouds and I've got the yoke and I'm just hanging on to it for like just dear life and it's just like this and it's just, I'm going to maybe 150, 160 knots. So I'm moving pretty fast. And it was like this, this, you know, sort of thing out of 2001. It was this, these, this kaleidoscope of colors. It was just unbelievable. But my eyes were just like this. I went, oh my God. And it must have lasted, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds or something. And just as soon as I'd gotten into it, bam, I get out and I pop out. And here I am. Here's the ocean. Here's the sand. Here's the sun and blue sky. And I went, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And I turned and went, wasn't that like the coolest thing you've ever seen? Oh, I was flying by myself. <laughs> and to this day, Nobody has ever seen that except me. And it makes me sad, not even Connor. Because when you get to share something, just like we talked about the camp smell, which I actually like the camp smell, I like that. I think it's, <laughs> until you get home, yeah, they should have a cologne, camp smell, cologne. But, but there's something about it that just enhances it and those stories get better over the years. So if you embrace gratitude, understand how it can change your life, use a gratitude journal, tell other people, help other people with it, it'll change their life. It can transform your life, it can change your life, and in my case, it truly saved my life. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming.